Welcome to a new multi-part series about Perlin noise and creating a 2D Perlin noise field, which you can visualize in a variety of ways. Eventually, we'll maybe we'll make a nice rainbow colored one. So ultimately, at the end of this video series, which is going to be two or three short videos, I want to have, show you how to make this particular project. But before I can get there, I just want to answer the question in this video, what is Perlin noise? And do a quick P5.js JavaScript sketch that shows you the basics of it. So. Um, let me come over here and make a little diagram. So there are two functions in the P5.js library. This is also in processing as well. <laughs> there are more than two functions. But there's two functions that I'm thinking of right now that are relevant to this discussion. One function is called random. Another function is called noise. Now, this is a little bit confusing because in truth, the word noise really just means random. If you think about audio noise, that <laughs> sound, right? It's kind of like random audio gibberish. But the noise function in both processing and P5.js rever refers to a particular kind of noise called Perlin noise. Now, Perlin noise is named for a computer scientist named Ken Perlin, who was developing algorithms and has been developing algorithms for many years, but in particular in the 1980s for a film called Tron. Now, I'm not referring to whatever that recent one was called. I don't even know if it's recent anymore. Tron Legacy, I think, the original Tron from sometime in the 1980s. And one of the things that you might have noticed in uh, computer-generated things that you experience is, you know, maybe there is a, in the scene, there's like, a, <laughs> to show my horrific artistic talent, <laughs> Uh, there is like a vase sitting on a table. And uh, at one point in computer graphics, there's this, there, uh, okay, so there's this, uh, uh, there's this idea of a texture. I should re-record this, but I'm going to keep going. There's this idea of a texture, right, which is kind of the stuff that is painted onto that three-dimensional form. Now, at one point, computer animators had to hand make these textures if you wanted the vase to appear, like, look like wood or marble. I don't know why you'd want a wood vase, but whatever. The point is, Perlin noise was originally developed for procedural textures of objects. Meaning, it, how do I create, you know, I could, as an artist, I could render uh, some sort of like wood-like texture just with my like pencil and paper and scan it or use some fancy Photoshop Illustrator-like program. Or I could have an algorithm that generates all the pix pixels to make uh, that kind of texture. So that's what Perlin noise was originally developed for procedural textures for three-dimensional di three objects in computer graphics. Now, Ken Perlin actually won an Academy Award for that. This is, I don't know why I'm, that's like my terrible drawing of an Oscar that looks nothing like an Oscar uh, for technical achievement. So that's kind of a little bit about backstory. Now, circling back, <laughs> I mentioned there is a noise function and a random function. The noise function gives you Perlin noise values. So, Hold off on the idea of procedural textures. I have an eraser here. Um, I'm going to come back to that in part two when I look at two-dimensional Perlin noise. But in this particular video, I am just going to talk about one-dimensional Perlin noise. So what do I mean by one-dimensional? Let's think about numbers over in a single dimension. Let's just pretend for a moment that that dimension is time. It's a useful way of thinking about it. So this is. The axis of time, getting very deep into philosophy here. This is the, an, an x-axis of time. Let's think about the random function. So let's say every two, f 60 frames per second, right, like an animation, like a P5GS or processing sketch, I'm calling the random function. I'm going to get a random value over time. Random, 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 random. OK, I can't pick random numbers because I'm a human being. But you can imagine. I might be getting random numbers between 0 and 1 over time. So that's what random. And this will look like, if I were to graph it, like some kind of big mess. Now, Perlin noise in one dimension is, has the same sort of idea. Let's say I want to get random numbers. Oh, this pen is terrible. I don't even know if you can read this. Um, time out. Back with a new marker. Well, this isn't the, so great, but let's see how this does. So I'm going to draw now the x-axis of time in blue. I wish I had a pink one or a purple one. Those are my favorite colors, in case you were wondering. But 
<laughs> I don't. Um, and I want now, instead of random values, I want Perlin noise values over time. So I'm going to draw you sort of a visual approximation of what it might look like. Something like this. You know, so the idea here, and, I, and the idea here is that ultimately at its core, Perlin noise gives you smooth random numbers. What do I mean by smooth? I mean that the, a random number that you might pick at any point in time is related to the random number you might pick later, a moment later, or the random number you picked a moment before. Whereas in, so this is random, this is noise, Perlin noise that is, in the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related at all. You pick, like, I'm picking random numbers between 0 and 10. 9, 2, 7, 6, 1, 9, 4, 8, 9, 2, 1, 3. I pick 9 a lot, apparently. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6. Boy, this is like Pearl and Noise performance art. I won't do it again, but that's what that was like. I'm, I'm going to do a whole separate video, which is me reading aloud Pearl and Noise values. I'm sure people want to watch that. Maybe I'll even sing them. <coughs> anyway, um, so you get the idea. That's the core difference. Now, that's how it works. Now, there's two more pieces I really want to get to here. One is, OK, I get it. I get the difference conceptually. How are these values generated? Well, actually, they're generated just ultimately, Merlin noise is just a lot of math on top of the actual random function itself. So let's look at this. And I'm going to uh, grab a paper towel here. And I'm going to explain to you, I, in my, with my best effort, how the actual Perlin noise algorithm works underneath the hood. Now, now, Ken Perlin has revised the algorithm several times over the years. I don't know, several, one or two times, three times, who knows? And you can kind of, I'll try to post some links to different versions or update, you know. Uh, but I'm going to give you kind of the basic gist of it. So let's say, let's go back to random. Let's say I'm going to pick random values over time to start with. And what I'm going to do is actually say, I'm going to pick them every 10 units of time, 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm going to pick, and I'm going to pick those random now values with some amplitude between something like 0 and 100. These are all sort of made up values. So I pick a random number here, then I pick a random number here, then I pick a random number here, and then I pick a random number here. Now, the next thing I want to do is do an interpolation function. What is an interpolation function? Well, here are some numbers. Here's me interpolating between them. That's like linear interpolation, I think. I just draw a line between the values. But maybe I want to do something a little nicer. And uh, one possibility of one kind of interpolation is called cosine interpolation, or sine interpolation, probably, which means let me draw a nice curve between these values. So <clears throat> here is the start of my Perlin noise function. And let's just pretend I also had to pick a value at 0, which let's say I picked this one. So now I'm going to do that again. This time, however, I'm going to pick those random values every five units of time. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I don't know why I'm right. 40. And instead of picking between 0 and 100, I'm just going to pick between 0 and 50. So let me pick random values. And now, just using like a random function, now I'm going to do this. Now let me do that one more time. And I'm going to pick them. Uh, every two and a half units of time, and I'm gonna, just going to go between 0 and 25, and now I'm going to just draw, it's going to be something like this. Now, what if I were to do this possibly 8 times, 16 times, 25 times, however many times I want, and each time I'm, take, I'm having, essentially, the, the amount of time that passes before I pick a new random number, and I'm also having that amplitude. Having, is that a way? I'm having it, I'm having it for lunch. <laughs> but I'm, I'm halving it, having it, I'm dividing it by half, whatever. Um, what then if I take all of these and add them together? Now, I'm kind of going to lose my mind here really trying to do this visually accurately. But let me just, let's just say for right now, I'm going to take this graph and add it with this graph. I'm going to get something that looks like this. It has the essential, I'm adding, I'm adding these values together with these values. 
It has the same basic quality, right? It looks kind of like that original shape, but there's lots of little variations based on these little tiny variations. And this is essentially how Perlin noise is calculated. And these, by the way, are known as octaves. So Perlin noise is calculated over a number of octaves, and essentially it's a bunch of random waveforms. And those waveforms, their, their period and their amplitude change over those octaves and get added together. And in that sense, it has a fractal-like quality. <laughs> you might have to go back and find some of my videos about fractals if that concept doesn't make sense to you. But fractal is this idea of self-similar shape, meaning at any zoom level, it's the same thing. And because we're getting sort of finer and finer detail as we go through these different octaves, if we were to zoom in here we, and blow that up, we might see something that looks something like this, almost like that original one. So Perlin noise, this is really how it's calculated. OK, I'm kind of almost done with this video, because in the next video, I'm just going to dive in and write code to sort of visualize how it works. But let's just make one more uh, point here. Actually, you know what? I'm done with this video. <laughs> this is the end of this first video, which is just kind of explaining the history of Perlin noise and how the algorithm works. The next video I need to look at, OK, well, if this is how I'm getting the Perlin noise values. How does that tie into the noise function? How do I call it? And how do I get those values back? And how do I use them in code? Okay, this concludes this particular video, which may or may not have a variety of mistakes and confusing aspects to them, and you, the internet, will let me know. Thank you for watching.